What's going on everybody? We're back at it again on the dual 212 Yurf Dog build. I finally got the axle in the mail. Hopefully this one's long enough. I could not find the exact axle that I need, so we're going to have to make some more modifications. But that being said, let's get after it. So I got my new axle in, but unfortunately the only way I could buy that axle in the correct length doesn't have the step down. The hubs that I originally had for this build are one inch to three quarter inch step down. So the hole on the end of these hubs is not big enough. Luckily, I've got step bits and a drill. So I'm gonna make it fit. Here we go. One eternity later. Alright, so we finally got all our parts in. I got both the drive sprockets, the hubs, the hardware, and a brake disc. We're going to have disc brakes on this thing, and uh, I don't trust drums, like, ever anymore. So, what we're going to do today is get these installed, and try and get our chains lined up then more than likely we're going to start working on the motors so let's get after it right there I know it's kind of dark inside the block but you cut the top up here for the little governor arm it should just be able to slide it out once you get the crankshaft positioned properly right about yeah basically turn the counterweights down and come on out it takes some finagling. You gotta hold your mouth just right for it to come out of there. Yeah, my. Might have to punch it out a little bit, depending on how good your cut was. Mine wasn't. Let's take a punch. There. There's one. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but back in here you've got that little plastic gear with the little metal clamps on it. There's a stud behind the flywheel that you can punch out and remove that whole assembly instead of sitting there having to pick at it, you know, trying to get all those little pieces bent or broke. Then you got to worry about little chunks floating around in your block. Make sure you get all them out. Use a punch and a hammer and you take all this out at one whack. So here's what you do. This is the other side of the block with the flywheel removed. Here is that little stud that I'm talking about. And really all you do is you take a punch, line it up here, pop this a few times and it comes right out. I'm going to set the camera up on the other side of the block so you can see the actual governor come out. Huh. Make sure you get all these little washers out. 
You see that daylight through there? It's gone. Alright, so here's the governor gear. Little plastic piece sitting in the center of it. You got this little washer. This right here, that little ring right there is what people are always trying to pop off with a screwdriver. I just punch the whole thing out and it's good to go. Then you just throw a bolt in that hole, you know, tap it, thread it, throw a bolt in there, and it's good to go. There's a lot more in-depth videos on several different YouTube channels on how to delete these governors. This is just the way I do it. I'm not going to go too in-depth because we're trying to move on and get this thing finished. But you can check out channels like uh, Cars and Cameras, Rather Be Welding. They usually have pretty in-depth videos as far as, you know, taking your governor out and stuff. There are precautions that you need to take. Uh, just keep in mind, you take the governor off, that stock flywheel tends to fall apart. So uh, be careful of that. All right, so I got the 10.5 or 10.8 pound springs, whatever they are stock. I got them out and I went ahead and replaced them with 18 pound springs so we don't have to worry as much about valve float. So now I'm gonna start putting everything back together. All right, so the next plan is we're gonna actually be removing these carb studs. We're not gonna be using the factory carb on this engine, on either one of them actually. Uh, so what you do really is you just take the nuts that originally came on, on the carb studs, and you'll put one backwards on here, then another one the regular way, tighten them together real good, and then you'll take a 10 millimeter wrench, put it against the back one, and if you've got it tightened up enough, the carb stud will actually start backing out. So I'm gonna take both of these out and I'll show you what we're gonna be doing with these. Okay, there we go. We got the stock carburetor moved, got the studs out. Now, usually a lot of the kits you'll find, you'll have your little adapter that sits out here, and then your carb sticks way out, and it's just in the way, and it's bulky, and kind of, to me, I don't like the way it even looks. Plus, you gotta worry about the carb bounce, bouncing around, stuff like that. So, what I actually got is what they call an inverted intake. So what happens is the carb, this intake bolts up right here, fits your stock intake, and then you've got this elbow, and the carburetor sits up here. So that way it's out of the way, you know, you're not hitting it with your leg or your shin, it's not bouncing around everywhere, and to me it just looks cleaner. So this is what we're going to use on both engines. I have another one of these floating around, so I'll have to find it, but we're going to get this one installed, so here we go. with a lot of these is when you go to put in one of these inverted intakes the carburetor normally has this drain down at the bottom it could either be this big fitting or it might just be a little brass fitting sticking out of the bottom but it doesn't clear your blower cover so what I'm gonna do is actually take this off I'm gonna drill a hole right here just enough for the bottom of this carburetor to clear. That way it looks cleaner. I've done it before where you just kind of beat it down with a hammer, but to me that looks like, to be honest with you, it looks like hammered dog shit. So I'm gonna take this off, drill this hole in right here, and make it look a little cleaner. We'll put it back on. All right, so I got it installed. It's just a Chinese knockoff Makuni uh, 22. Had to clearance out this blower cover to make room for all that stuff for the drain down inside of it. But it clears everything. 
and it looks pretty good. I'm gonna end up painting these blower covers, so it's all good there. So now I just got to do the other one, and we'll keep it rolling. Well, that's about all the time we got for today. I wanted to get the exhaust done, and I've got a kind of crazy idea for the exhaust on this go-kart. However, I got a tubing bender, but I don't have the materials on hand to make a stand for it. I tried putting it in my vise, and it just it didn't work. I can't torque it down enough to keep it from moving while I'm bending the tube. So I'm going to have to make a stand for that. So we got the uh, governor's deleted. We got the valve uh, springs put in. We got the lash adjusted. Uh, we've got some other things cooking for it. Um, like I said, along with the exhaust, um, I actually ended up getting a full set of 25-inch ATV wheels and tires for this go-kart. And I've got to kind of fabricate some hubs to make it fit onto a Yerf dog. Um, I think I have an idea how to do it, and I'll obviously share that with everybody because there's a good chance that it'd be a lot easier to adapt ATV wheels and tires onto it. Um, and anything else for that matter. So, um, okay. And my dog's here. Come here. Alright. So, uh, till next time, y'all get up, get out there, and get after it.